Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob here, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Uh, like I mentioned in the introduction, uh, Jude grew up with a guy named J, uh, James. Uh, they had a father whose name was Joseph and a mother whose name was Mary. Yes, they grew up with Jesus, but in the first uh, verse in Jude, there's only one chapter. So um, he does not even dare to call himself the brother of Jesus. I find that very, very interesting. So without further ado, let's read the book of Jude. It ties in with Isaiah 65. So I'm going to do the book of Jude first, and then I'm going to do Isaiah 65. And uh, people, I'm going to probably, when I get to Isaiah 66, which roughly corresponds with the book of Revelation, which is the end of Isaiah and the last book in the Bible, um, I'm going to probably, I might go off the internet indefinitely. So like I say, if you want copies of all my Bible studies, I'll be happy to send them to you. Just send me in a USB drive. I'll make copies, send it to you, and uh, you could do with it whatever you want. I don't copyright anything. Lord said, freely you have received, freely give. I totally believe that, and I guess I'm, you know, storing up treasures in heaven, I'm hoping. So, uh, without further ado, let's read Jude chapter 1. Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ. You notice he doesn't say his brother. I mean, he, he grew up with Jesus. Can you imagine that? Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ and brother of James, to them that are sanctified by God the Father and preserved in Jesus Christ and called. Mercy unto you and peace and love be multiplied. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation. It was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that ye should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. Boy, we don't even know what the uh, faith delivered unto the saints is today. Verse 4. For there are certain men crept in unawares. Yeah, sneaky devils. They creep in. They crept in unawares. We didn't we we weren't aware of them. Well, I am, but very few very few people are. Now, that doesn't mean I'm special, it's just that the Lord's woken me up to this stuff. For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old, of old, ordained to this condemnation. Do you know that there's men of old ordained to condemnation? Oh, but my pastor told me in John 3.16 that God loves everybody. He loves the whole world. Uh, no. No. Read Genesis chapter 6 sometime, and when you realize that the sons of God were the fallen angels that married the women, and they had giants for children who were the Philistines, who were branches of the Canaanites, you know, they're human, satanic, fallen angel hybrids. The churches hide this information big time. Oh, you say... But I've never heard this before. Well, duh, that's because you go to a 501c3 tax-exempt, IRS-approved, state-chartered business that claims they're a church. They have the name church in the name. Why do you think you've never heard this stuff before? I have an entire playlist on Genesis chapter 6 where it proves absolutely what the sin of the angels was in Genesis 6. And then God flooded the whole world. No, I don't believe in a local flood. Absolutely not. But, um, 
For there were certain men crept in unawares who were who were before of old ordained to this condemnation. Do you know they were they were ordained to this con- condemnation? Ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness. How do they do that? Eternal security, once saved, always saved. Oh, well, you know, if you're obedient to the Lord, you're, you're you know, lordship salvation. You're trying to earn your salvation by keeping the commandments. Yeah, they teach you to, oh, well, don't worry. You know, if you sin, it doesn't matter. You know, God, you know, you're eternally secure no matter what you do. John MacArthur, who even, he even said that if you took the mark of the beast, that if, if you know, you're eternally secure, God will, you know, God has to let you into heaven, even if you take the mark of the beast, where the Bible says that those that take the mark of the beast are thrown into the lake of fire. People like John MacArthur turn the Bible into a lie. Oh, that's right. He's a TV preacher. Yeah, I've listened to him, and there's some things he said I actually liked, but I, you know, when they tell you... When they tell you that you can do something that Jesus says you'll get thrown into the lake of fire, they're devils. I'm sorry. No, I'm not. I'm not sorry. Ungodly men turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. I will therefore put you in remembrance, though you once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believed not. Yeah, people, God took his people out of the land of Egypt, and then when they were disobedient, he destroyed them. Verse 6, And the angels which kept not their first estate. Remember, there was war in heaven. Uh, Revelation 12, I believe it is. Michael and his angels fought against his angels, and they were cast out of heaven. And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains unto darkness, unto the judgment of the great day, even as Sodom and Gomorrah. People, this is all one thought. The angels, they left their estate, they left their habitation, they're in chains of darkness under the judgment of the great day, even as Sodom and Gomorrah. Guess what? Sodom and Gomorrah was part of the Canaanite cities. Even, and this is all one thought with the angels, even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication, human, angel, hybrids, anyone, and going after strange flesh. Now, of course, you could say that includes sodomy. I wouldn't argue with you. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh, are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. What did God do to Sodom and Gomorrah? He burned them. Verse 8, likewise also these filthy dreamers. You know, they're talking about the fallen angels, people. Likewise also these filthy dreamers defile the flesh, defile the flesh, despise dominion, and speak evil of dignities. Yeah, they hate government, God-given government. Verse 9, yet Michael the archangel, when contending with the devil... He disputed about the body of Moses. I did a Bible study on that. Durst not bring against him a railing accusation, but said, The Lord rebuke thee. So here it is in verse 6. You've got talking about angels. And then in verse 9, you're talking about Michael the archangel. What do you think they're talking about here? Verse 10. But these speak evil of those things which they know not, but what they know naturally as brute beasts, and those things they corrupt themselves. Woe unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain. It's funny how they mention Cain. 
Some of the greatest Bible scholars that I know claim that Saint Cain was fathered by the devil himself. And you know what? When you do a word-by-word -word Bible study on it, and you know what happened in Genesis 6, it's not that far-fetched. It really isn't. I mean, you look in Adam's genealogy, you know, the Bible, look at Bible genealogy. I mean, they go from Christ all the way back to Adam. You know, the word begat, you know, and Adam begat, and Adam, you know, the begat, and Abraham begat Isaac, and Isaac begat Jacob, and Ace, Jacob begat the twelve, you know. It just goes on and on and on, begat, begat, begat. Genealogy is listed very specifically in the Bible. And guess what? There's not one place where it says, an Adam begat Cain. Not one place. You know, that makes you wonder, you know? It makes you wonder. Woe unto them, for they've gone on the way of Cain and ran greedily after the heir of Balaam for a reward and perished in the gainsaying of Cori, Korah. These are spots in your feasts of charity. When they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear, cloud they are, clouds they are without water, carried about of winds, trees whose fruit withereth without fruit, twice dead. They're dead spiritually and they're dead physically. Twice dead, plucked up by the roots, raging waves of the sea, foaming out their own shame, wandering stars. Job 38 calls the angels stars. Wandering stars to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of thee, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds, which they have ungodly committed, and of all their hard speeches against uh, uh, and of all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. These are murmurers, complainers, walking after their own lusts, and their mouth speaking great swelling words, having men's persons in admiration because of advantage. Yeah, if you're born rich, you've got an advantage, right? But beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, how that they told you that there should be mockers, mockers in the last time, who would walk after their own ungodly lusts. These be they who separate themselves, sensual, having not the Spirit. But but, but ye, beloved, build, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life, and others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. Wow. In other words, we're supposed to do evangelism. Pulling people out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. Uh, but not all of us are evangelists, by the way. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God our Savior be glory and majesty dominion and power both now and ever amen all blessings praise glory and honor to God the Father and his only begotten Son Jesus who is the Christ the Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world in Jesus name amen